So you say something in Hungarian now, right? Yes. So go ahead. I'm listening. No. <laughs> Just go, go. So we are in okay. Hungary, so you have to speak Hungarian. Okay. So I will do the introductions in Hungarian then. Okay. Go, so go. Well, Köszönjük meleteket itt a mai Maul beszélgetésünk. Egy nagy tapsot kérnék szépen Maulnak, aki ugye a legnagyobb vendégünk ezen a hétvégén. És ez a mostani beszélgetés annyiban lesz rendhagyó, hogy tegnap én kérdeztem tőle, és ugye kevesebb idő jutott a ti kérdéseitekre. Most viszont ti fogjátok kezdeni a kérdésekkel az egészet, és ha az egész időben ti kérdeztek, az sem lesz probléma. Ott láttok egy mikrofont, oda lehet sorban állni, már most elkezdhetitek. Úgyhogy aki kérdezni szeretne, az már most elkezdhet oda sorban állni. Oké, okay, so I just say that if they have any questions, then basically we have the microphone there, so they can line up there. And I don't think anyone is brave enough today. Yeah, we have to warm up a little bit. So, yeah. so this is a Q&A if anybody wants to know something about me, even the deepest secrets go to the microphone and ask me something. Otherwise, I just start talking, and that uh, means we will be here for a while. So That's right. <laughs> so if nobody shows up, you can talk, you can ask me something. Yeah. What do you want to know about me? Actually, I got to know a lot of stuff yesterday, but my, <laughs> yeah, favorite, thing, my favorite thing was the story with the car crash and the makeup, and ah, yeah. the funny stories. This is always my favorite part, the funny stories. It is funny after some years. It's okay, but do you but have do you have any more funny stories, or we can repeat the one from yesterday because I really like that story. Cosplay related? Yes, or anything you can think of, but cosplay related is always fun. Okay, cosplay related funny story. Yeah, one once uh, I <laughs> um, I was driving in my car and I was too fast, so. I don't know what that is in English when you get a picture when you know when the they, camera the speed yeah. speed camera speed camera yes, yeah when, right. if this is the English term for that and I was I think Darth Maul so that was pretty funny to get that picture then so do but you know this guy it, no that's that, Darth Maul was that in Germany because in it Germany you can drive really fast yeah it was in Germany yeah then so. you were driving even more fast than Germans do no no you you You, you have to obey the law, of course, <laughs> so when there's a speed limit... Yeah, but the motorway is like 100... Yeah, that was Autobahn, but oh, I was, yeah. uh, uh, okay. they, they did it in the, in the city, so... I, I oh, don't have good. such a good story in cosplay. I have some stunt stuff, I can tell. No, that's fine, that's absolutely... Okay, okay. do you want to hear some stunt stuff, some funny stunt stuff? Yeah? I, I'm okay. happy in Hungarian. Ugye, uh, nem tudom, mennyien tudjátok, hogy kaszkadőrként dolgozott uh, ben nagyon sokáig. Ki az, aki tudja, hogy kaszkadőrként dolgozott? Yeah, they are the people who know that you were a stuntman before you started cosplaying. Okay, give me a second. I will, I will get your fan for you. No, I'm good, I'm good. Today is fine. Today, yeah. Today is fine. But, yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine. No problem. Okay. So, a funny stunt story. Yeah. <coughs> so, I was in a... In a stunt show, it was a cop and gangster stunt show. I was a gangster, of course, and it's a little bit hard to explain. In the show, it was a, a car stunt show and with high falls and stuff. And usually I play the gangster, but I was hurt, so I asked if I can play a cop. And the cops, they, they had easy stuff to do because they were just standing around and shooting and the gangster did the hard stuff. So I said, Let me do some easy stuff. So I was a cop on that day without any rehearsal. So I just did another role without any rehearsal. Just just do it again, yeah? And uh, in the show, it's a little bit hard to explain. There are, um, it looks like uh, the people who are watching the show are watching a real movie set. And there were several stunt scenes and they're just watching how we shoot a movie. And um, in the show, we pretend that our main actress just left. We don't have a main actress anymore. And we just ask a girl from the audience, uh, are you want to be, uh, do you want to be our main actress? And then the girl from the audience says, yeah, okay. But the girl from the audience, she's one of us. So that's the thing behind it. And there's, there's the scene where uh, the director puts her in a car and says, so this is a stunt car and now there's the gangster and now you just hit the pedal to the metal and then drive over the gangster, drive over him. And she's like, oh my God, I can't do it. Uh, uh, because maybe he will die. No, no, do it, he's a gangster, no problem, no, no problem. He's a stuntman. So 
It's cool. You, you had to stand in front of the car. No, no. I, and that day I wasn't a gangster. Oh, oh, okay. So I was a cop and I was oh, pretending. I was pretending that I'm not in the scene, mm -hmm. standing behind the car, and the car should have gone in this direction. So I was standing there, eating my popcorn, waiting for the scene to be done. And then, then she hit the pedal, and it's planned like this. The car goes backwards to the cops and not to the gangster. So we're pretending that she just did something wrong and drive over the cops and not the gangster. So I was one of the cops who got hit. The car drags me a little bit. The car breaks, and then I roll off the car, roll over the ground, and then... Then I'm laying there pretending that I'm hurt. Oh my God, I, I'm hurt. And then she jumps out of the car. It's all part of the, of the whole scene. She jumps out of the car and uh, it's like, oh my God, I did something wrong. And the car is still in gear. So now the car is driving backwards without any driver. Still part of the show. And then I had the great idea because I, I never practice it. I thought, oh, it would be nice maybe when I'm on the floor so this is the car, this is a car, and I'm on the floor, and the car is coming towards me, and I had the great idea that maybe it's cool when the car comes closer, that I just put my feet against the car, and the car pushes me over the floor. But it didn't work. So the car comes, it pushes me, and nothing happens. I, I'm, not, I'm stuck on the ground. And then I thought, okay, maybe it's a great idea to not be run over if I just turn, and the car goes this way, and I was like this, so, oh my God, it worked, nothing happened. But then the door was still open of the car. And then the door hit me, hit me in the head, pushed my head to my hip, and I was like this, super crushed, and dragged over the, over the ground, and all the stunt guys were like, oh my God, oh my God, they had to stop the car somehow, but I was in front of the door, they couldn't get in the car, so some guy jumped from the other, other side through the window, and pushed the brakes with his hand. And I was hurt really bad. Uh, not, nothing was broken. We, we wanted to talk about the funny story, but... <laughs> yeah, the thing, is, the thing is, so far, it looked like all the other shows, because in our show, it should have been... Uh, it, it was like this, this, that the cop gets hurt, but only pretending, but I got really hurt. And, and then the director, he does his thing, what he usually does is like, hey Ben, get up, it's no problem, that's stuntman life, so get up, yeah? are you a man or what, get up. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm hurt. And he said, that's the job, you don't get any money if you don't get up, see, so he's doing his thing, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm hurt. And then he comes closer, and then he was like, holding his microphone like, really? Are you really hurt? Said, yeah, man, I'm, I'm fucked. I'm so fucked. So, okay, guys, bring him out. He's done for today. So the funny thing is you that didn't believe that for you so were long, hurt. everybody from the team thought I'm, sh I'm still acting, but I was really hurt. So that's the funny thing. After one week, I was fine again, took some painkillers, and I could work. So it's kind of funny afterwards. But uh, yeah, it's a cool stunt story. So uh, do you have a question over there, or just sitting... I think Just taking, taking pictures. photos, yes. So okay. no, no one has a question. Still no questions. No questions? Still? Somebody, you have a question. What is your question? Hi. Uh, Hi. So yesterday you told us about your trip to USA. Yeah. Uh, and can you tell us more about that trip uh, and the photo shoots? What was your favorite place? Okay, yeah, yeah. So for, for the people who don't know, we went uh, on a Red Dead Redemption photo shoot road trip last June. We've been in the US for four weeks. Um, we traveled through several states, Texas, Louisiana, <coughs> um, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, Wyoming, Colorado, uh, to take the best Wild West pictures, uh, 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 look for the best locations from the game. And um, yeah, so we started in Louisiana, so, no, basically Texas. But that was only horses. It was about the horses and not about the locations. So later we went to Louisiana and we've been on the lake with alligators and stuff. And um, we found uh, a tree, I don't know, uh, it's, uh, I mean it's a cypress tree, maybe that's the name. They're growing in the lake 
and we found one in the lake, and I was sitting down on the, on the tree, and that was such a cool coincidence, because the tree was this shape, and it could just sit there with my, uh, what is it, fish rod for fishing? Yeah. yeah, fishing rod. Fishing yeah, rod. fishing rod. Yes. Yeah, so I was sitting there, it was a perfect shot, and alligators swimming around me. So that's the cool part about the US. It's still the real deal. It's dangerous. We've been to bear, to grizzly bear territory. Um, so we went to um, Wyoming, to the Grand Teton National Park, and it's totally grizzly territory. And we Googled, when we were already there walking around, if it's dangerous, and yeah, it's dangerous. So what, what can you do? So yeah, maybe get bear spray. So it's like pepper spray. So we, we weren't prepared. So, but nothing happened. We haven't seen a bear. I have, we haven't seen snakes. Uh, what we saw is, do you know the animal uh, elk? The English word is elk, but it's not a moose. It's like a deer, a normal deer, but that big. The head is here. So uh, in Colorado, we went up on a hill uh, on a mountain, actually, it was, we were already on 3,000 meters height and uh, the sun was um, setting, setting, yeah? Setting. Yeah, and um, we, of course we need daylight and I had this cross from Arthur's, no spoiler, did, I, did everybody play Red Dead Redemption 2? Yeah? Okay, so nobody's here playing it right now and not knowing what will happen, yeah? So you have to cover your ears. Thank you very much. So I was carrying Arthur's cross for the grave uphill. Yeah? Now you're good. Now you're good. OK. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to run because the sun was setting. And we were already on 3,000 meters height. And we had to still run 800 meters with the cross in my full Western outfit, walking, up, uh, running uphill, and then find the location, put the cross there, some flowers, standing there, taking a picture, and done. Then we had to go back down, and it was getting dark, and then we found those elk. We were walking like, oh, yeah, we have to go down with the cross, and then there was the elk looking at me. So, okay, I go this way then, you can go there, I go this way, yeah, okay. Such a big deer, it's so impressive. Because when you see pictures of those elks, when you see pictures, you don't have a comparison, you don't know that they are that big. But they are huge, so, but they are not really dangerous, as long as you're cool, you're fine. So we are good, nothing happened to us. Another cool thing is uh, when we've been to Colorado, Durango, there was, um, we wanted to take a picture when I had this, uh, this boom box for explosive to, 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 uh, to destroy the tracks in the game, you do that. Yeah. There's a steam train coming, and there in the US there are two steam trains, very old steam trains still running, and one is in Durango. And we found a very nice spot. Luckily, it's still in the city, but in this direction, you see only nature and mountains, but behind you is the city. So on the picture, it looks totally like somewhere in the desert. So it was cool. And uh, we've been there, I think, at 2, 2.45. The train should arrive at 3.15, so still some time left. Uh, no, we have been there at 2.30. And then we set up the camera, and we, I set up the boom box and stuff. And then I still had to cover my tattoo, because for the picture, I was wearing a mask, and it was from behind, so I didn't need full makeup. So we covered my tattoo, and while we were covering the tattoo, we were like, what's that sound? It was 2.45, yeah? So, and the train should have arrived at 50, uh, 3.15. So what's that sound? Is it, a, is it thunder? And then we looked over there, and there was a train coming. And we weren't ready, so, oh shit. And then, as fast as we could uh, finish the, the cover-up of the tattoo, then Maya grabbed the camera. It's, it was a borrowed camera, a 7,000 euro camera, borrowed, and she had still the whole makeup on the cam uh, on her hands. Grabbed the camera, sat there, and I was running to the boom box, put on the, the mask, and in the last second, put on the mask, and position, kick, one, one picture, done. So, and that was the only chance we had, but it's a very nice picture, so. Afterwards, a very good experience, because we've been to so many places, we've seen the Wild West, so many locations, but while being there, it was the most stressful time ever. 
Because we traveled 7,000 miles, we could only shoot in the morning and in the evening because of the sun. It didn't look good with the, with the hat and the shadow. So uh, we had to travel a lot. Sometimes I slept with the makeup on and I tied my hands to my belt so that I don't scratch my face in the night. So I was sleeping like this <laughs> just to get the next shot done next morning. We thought that it's like a little bit like vacation and some cool road trip and some cosplay stuff, but it was only hustle and cosplay stuff. But after that, when I think back, of course, it's, uh, it's amazing because of the places we've seen. Uh, and it was, I mean, I, I always wanted to be a cowboy my whole life. And now I was a cowboy in the Wild West and was absolutely the real deal. So it's, uh, it's fantastic. I want to do it again, maybe as John Marston, then in Nevada, Arizona, Utah, that, that places. We will see. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Another question from my Canadian friend who lives in Hungary now. Hello. Oh, sorry. Hello. Hi. Um, sort of two questions. Favorite cosplay of all time that you've done? and where you shot it is your favorite place as well? That's a tough question because I, I don't really have a favorite costume because mm -hmm. it's so different. Some costumes have, uh, have a lot of history. Some are my favorite characters. Some are the best uh, crafting-wise. So the best crafting-wise is Kratos from God of War because of the silicon muscle suit and all the techniques. Uh, and it's the latest one, so of course it's the best one. The latest one is usually the best one. And it, it looks fantastic, I, I think. And um, um, yeah, e emotion, emotional-wise, it's uh, it's Arthur and and Joel from The Last of Us. So because those are my favorite games, my favorite characters, my favorite games. And now I've been to the Wild West with Joel. I've been uh, to to the Ukraine, to the Chernobyl exclusion zone in Pripyat. We, sh we took the pictures there to have the perfect shot. So another very crazy experience. Um, so now I answered both questions <laughs> in one, right? So yeah, my favorite, my favorite place, I, I, of course, the, the Wild West was so awesome. So the, the lake in Louisiana with the alligators and the, the trees, or where we shot what I just told on the mountain, there were so crazy places and I really, I want to live there. <laughs> so that's, I don't want to live in Pripyat, but it was a crazy experience to just go there because it was the absolute perfect location. Um, because in the game, I, I mean, most of you played The Last of Us, I guess. And uh, yeah, the, it's, it's over 30 years, is it 30 years? 25 years later. And in, in 25 years, when you abandon a city, a lot of stuff happens. And Pripyat was the perfect location because it was abandoned, the nature grew back, uh, something terrible happened there, so you, when you went to Pripyat, you had this weird feeling because it was a uh, disaster what happened there. People died, and now you are in this peaceful area where trees are in the middle of the street and buildings are in the woods somehow. Um, so it was really crazy and it felt like a, another world. So. But I can't decide which one is more impressive. It's uh, Pripyat is as uh, impressive as, for example, Louisiana. Louisiana feels like a different world. So, so ever been to Louisiana? Not yet. <laughs> yeah, you should go there. It's really weird. You have those, you have the bugs flying around, but very slow. They're not like, they're like, just, just <laughs> flying here in thousands, like, and it's so hot and, it, it sounds so different in Louisiana because they have so many uh, bugs and, and animals. Yeah, those two places are the most impressive ones. And yeah, for the costume, I can't decide. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're very welcome. So another question, do we have another question? Ah, you have a question, perfect. Are you good? Are you good by the yes, way? Yes, I okay. am good. If they can, don't I think you can relax at the moment. I am relaxing. <laughs> okay. I am totally relaxing. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah. Hi. Can you tell Hi. about your future cosplay plans? More bearded man, I guess. Yeah, you're right. So my next project, that's your question? Yeah, yeah basically, yeah. Yeah, I, I said that yesterday. So um, 
I, I think the next costume we will make is another Geralt outfit because it's about time. My, my wolf, uh, my bear armor I wore yesterday is from 2016 and most of the cosplayers here know that if you have a costume that is seven years old, it's time to make a new one because the new one will be much better. And, um, the new one is always better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, I traveled the world with this costume and it doesn't smell good anymore. I've been to China with this one, For 48 degrees in China. It was like hell. We came out of the plane, we uh, went down the stairs and I was standing right next to the, to the engine. 48 degrees. Was, and then, oh my God, it's so hot here. Let's go away from that engine. It's so hot. It's still very hot. Oh my God, it's still very hot. <laughs> oh, that's the temperature here in China. Okay, and then it feels so ridiculous, the heat. And we had to shoot a commercial outside and I was the only one who was wearing a bear armor, of course. Yeah, all the other guys had so some, some shorts and t-shirt and they were dying already. They were like, oh my God, it's so hot. And I, w I was in my bear armor, yeah, <laughs> okay. And <laughs> so you can imagine it doesn't smell good anymore and you can't get rid of that. So I need a new one. So that's, that's my next uh, project, Garrett. I still have to finish my Witcher bike, my chopper. Uh, I, after cosplay became my, my job, it's not my hobby anymore. So I needed a new hobby. So I started to, to work on, on bikes again. I did that in the past and now I'm building a Witcher bike. So I have to finish that one. And after that, that's what I said yesterday, uh, I really want to do Greaseball from Starlight Express, the musical. Uh, I, nobody knows him really, but I grew up with that I musical. I don't really know that story. Yeah, yeah it's, he's, he looks like Elvis and a diesel lock. Because in the, in the musical, the, there are trains. You have the diesel lock, you have the steam, steam train, and you have the electric train. And uh, he's a diesel lock, and he's basically he's Elvis. And I, that's the next thing I really want to do, but just a passion thing. Um, yeah. Um, Odin is still on the list uh, from, from the movie, from the Marvel movies. Odin. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Odin and Ezio from Assassin's Creed 2. Still thinking about that. But there are so many more. <laughs> so, but but my, late, my next passion project will be uh, Greaseball from Starlight Express. I know, can, nobody can knows wait. it, but I, I really want to uh, go to conventions. They, they have uh, uh, roller skates in the musical, but I, I'm, I'm using inline skates then. And I really want to skate around <laughs> over the convention yeah. and singing, Hey, come to diesel, lock to help us rolling stock. Hurt to read moose. It's German. Stack in the diesel, I am about to see a sign. Hurt to read moose. That's a, come to that's here a, too. <laughs> yeah. You know, Thanks. I really want to do that. He come to diesel, lock. <laughs> Yeah, okay, Thank that's you. my next project. You're very welcome. We have five minutes left for today. We have what? We have five, five minutes okay. still. So we have uh, time for the last question. Someone yes or no in? question. Oh, oh, 10 okay, yes two, or no okay. questions. Okay. <laughs> two questions. Um, hi. hi, so for you personally, what do you think is the hardest part of being a cosplayer? Uh, of, of being a cosplayer or a job? business cosplayer, cosplay influencer? Both or either, I guess. Uh, so there shouldn't be a, a hard part about being a cosplayer when you do it as a hobby, because it's your hobby. You should do it for fun. Uh, of course, wearing cosplays usually is sometimes very painful. So that's the hard part about it. And the cosplay, cr the con crunch. So the last days before a convention, that's the hardest part. And sometimes wearing it. So. Uh, who, who of the cosplayers here experienced some serious pain at convention just wearing a costume? So here we go, just hands up. Who experienced some pain? Yeah, so, so you know the drill, you know pain. So that's some hard part. And as being a uh, cosplay influencer, the hard part is I have to be my, I, I had a management, but I left it. So I'm my own manager. I have to negotiate all the contracts. I have to take care of, of all the, the money stuff. Um, then uh, I have to build the cosplays, I have to post. You're always struggling and fighting against the algorithm 
because you always have to post. I don't do that. But you see that you, the engagement goes down. And then when the engagement goes down and this is your job, you're, you're like, oh my god, nobody likes me anymore. And so you always feel the pressure to post. But you can only post if you build something before, if you have something new. Because you can't just take a picture every day and post it. So as a cosplay influencer, you always have to come up with some, something new. And um, I'm used to uh, at least 12 hour working day, it's just normal. And sometimes 16, 17, 18, sometimes 24 when it comes to a con crunch or to finishing a project for a publisher. Uh, sometimes they build the whole f cyberpunk. When we went to LA and, uh, f with this in 2018, nobody has seen this character any, uh, before. So we, we made it for CD Projekt and they announced it in LA and they showed our pictures. So everything was around us and uh, around us getting the costumes done. So you can imagine the pressure. And uh, yeah, we didn't sleep for three days because we had to get it done. And then we were there, it worked fine, but the pressure is high sometimes. So that's a really hard part. So you have to... Uh, uh, keep up with the deadlines and all the other stuff around. So it's a really tough job, but I love it. But the part I love the most is uh, meeting you guys. That's the best part about it, going to conventions and talk to you and spend some time with my fellow cosplay buddies and my loyal uh, followers. That's the best part. The other part is just business. That's, that here is fun. Thank you. You're very welcome. So one, one last question. I can do it. Hi. Hi. So you mentioned that uh, you have the Orgeralt costume for. Can you speak a little bit louder? I don't understand. You. <laughs> Sorry. So you mentioned that you have your Orgeralt costume for a while by now, and uh, I was wondering whether you have any special way of uh, cleaning your costumes and stuff like that. A special way of cleaning? Cleaning your costumes. No. <laughs> that was an easy answer. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't. For the for Geralt, for example. Uh, I can't put it in the washing machine. It's just in water with soap, just dipping it a little bit sometimes and take it out. But we don't have a special technique to clean the costumes because there's a lot of weathering on it, Some, a lot of dirt, blood, and uh, color for the weathering. And when you wash it too hard, it comes off. You can do it, but then you have to do the weathering part almost, let's say, 80% again. So sometimes we try to clean it, but yeah, maybe it's easier to just make a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I see, thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, I guess time is up, right? Judith, I have to go. I have to go, right? So I see yes, there's that's a right. lot of so zeros there. Yes, All right. that was the last question. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for everyone for being yeah. here. Thank you very much. Ma will see be you later, here guys. And surviving this weekend with us. Bye-bye, bye-bye.